हेलो क्लास सेवन स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल आई एम मोनिका बजाज योर साइंस टीचर एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट योर यूनिट नंबर सेकेंड मटीरियल्स एंड चैप्टर नंबर थर्ड फाइबर टू फैब्रिक एनिमल्स फाइबर्स एनिमल फाइबर्स वूल एंड सिल्क हेयर ऑफ सर्टेन एनिमल्स कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज फॉर मेकिंग क्लोथिंग मटीरियल्स वूल एंड सिल्क आर ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम द एनिमल्स That's why these are called animal fibers or fibers from animals. Let's discuss about wool. Wool is commonly obtained from the hair of sheep, goat, yak, rabbit and camels. These animals are therefore called wool yielding animals. All these wool yielding animals bear hair on their body. Why? Wool fiber is highly porous. the air in the pores acts as an insulator and does not allow the body heat to go out thus hair on the body of these animals keep them warm during colder conditions wool is used for making winter clothing see this table table first list of indian breeds of sheep name of breed quality of wool distribution first one is Rampur Bushar Brown Fleece Uttar Pradesh and Himachal Pradesh Second is Nali Carpet Wool Rajasthan Haryana and Punjab Third is Lohi Good Quality Wool Rajasthan and Punjab Bhakarwal Woolen Shawls Jammu and Kashmir Patanwadi Hosri Gujarat मारवारी कोर्स वूल गुजरात फ्रॉम फाइबर्स टू वूल इन द फॉलोइंग सेक्शन यू विल लर्न अबाउट द जर्नी ऑफ वूल फ्रॉम द रियरिंग एंड ब्रीडिंग ऑफ द वूल येल्डिंग एनिमल्स सच एज शीप टू द फाइनल फिनिश्ड वूल गेटिंग वूल फाइबर फ्रॉम द शीप और इन जनरल एनी वूल येल्डिंग एनिमल्स इन्वॉल्व द स्टेप्स गिवन ऑन नेक्स्ट पेज फर्स्ट इज रेयरिंग एंड ब्रीडिंग ऑफ शीप second is shearing third is washing or scouring fourth is sorting fifth is carding sixth is dyeing and last one is spinning and weaving rearing and breeding of sheep to obtain wool a herd of sheep are reared and breed in different parts of the world the farmers take care of the sheep and their young ones and provide them with the food and food up sheep and goat are herbivorous and farmers often leave them to graze on the green grass of hill tops sheep and goats are good mountain climbers and can go to the mountain tops to eat grass the rearers provide them with a mixture of pulses corn jowar oil cakes material left after taking out oil from seeds and minerals During extreme winters sheep are kept indoors and are fed on leaves grains and dry food Next is shearing the process of shaving the body of a sheep to obtain fleece is called shearing The shorn sheep is immediately dipped in an antiseptic solution to protect it from skin infection The body of sheep is shaved only once a year and mostly in spring or early summer washing or scouring the sheared hairs are thoroughly washed in a series of tubs having soapy water this removes grease dust and dirt the process of washing here is called scouring nowadays scouring is done by machines the wool is then passed through a series of rollers and dryers next is sorting The dried hair of different texture are then sorted out. The small fluffy fibers called burns are picked out and sent for reprocessing. Carding. After cleaning the selected wool fibers are passed through rollers. This straightens the fibers and removes the unwanted matter. The fibers are scoured again and dried. Next is dyeing. The natural fleece of sheep is black, brown or white in color. 
the fibers obtained after combing is dyed in various colors spinning and waving the wool fibers are straightened combed and rolled into yarns longer fibers give wool yarn for sweaters shorter fibers are spun and woven into woolen cloth silk now let's discuss about silk silk is a strong but light and soft cloth having shimmering appearance the silk fibers are also animal fiber obtained from the cocoon of silk moth silk worm the rearing of silk moths for obtaining silk is called sericulture early history of the silk silk was first discovered and developed in early china possibly about 3000 bc legend gives credit to zi ling shi the 14 years old bride of emperor huang li for the discovery of the silk cocoon and the invention of first silk reel a legend goes that empress washed a silk worm weaving its cocoon in a mulberry tree she placed the cocoon in a cup of tea she was drinking to soften it and pulled out a beautiful thread she then cultivated enough silk worm to make cloth until 300 ad only the chinese know how to make silk and they guarded their secret jealousy then the japanese discovered the secret and eventually the indian also learned how to make silk life history of silk moth there are four stages in the life cycle of a silk moth egg caterpillar larva pupa and adult the female silk moth lays hundreds of tiny eggs on the mulberry leaves the larva that hatch out of the eggs are called caterpillars caterpillars feed on mulberry leaves and grow in size when a caterpillar is ready to enter the pupa stage it stop feeding and its salivary glands secretes fiber around the pupa the fiber is made up of a protein which harden the exposure to cut the forms a cover around the pupa which is called cocoon it is ball shaped and is formed of silk fiber for the development of silk moth continues inside the cocoon at the end of the pupa stage moth cuts the silken fiber of the cocoon and the young moth flies out see this diagram this is a diagram which shows you the life cycle of a silk moth from cocoon to silk production of silk from silk moth involves the following steps first the eggs of the silk moth are stored on strips of cloth or paper and are sold to silk worm farmers second the eggs are kept by the farmers under hygienic conditions and under controlled temperature and humidity until the caterpillar comes out of the shell next the silk moth larva are then fed on mulberry leaves under the controlled conditions when the caterpillar stop eating these are shifted to bamboo chambers provided with small racks twings here the caterpillar spin cocoon inside the cocoon the pupa continues growing at the end of the pupal stage the moth cuts the cocoon and flies out fully grown cocoon are sorted out according to their color size shape and texture the sorted cocoon are immersed in the boiling water to kill the insect inside them the cocoons are then put through a series of hot and cold immersions the process is called softening of sericin the sericin are silk gum is a gummy substance that hold the two strands of fiber fiber and protein of a silk fiber together the silk filaments are separated from the cocoons this process is called reeling of the silk the resulting fiber is known as raw silk it can be dyed into various colors silk fiber are spun into silk yarn which are used by the weavers to weave the silk cloth now let's quick revise with readers digest hair of certain animals can also be used for making clothing materials wool is obtained mainly from several breed of sheep 
the process of shaving the body of a sheep is to obtain fleece is called shearing silk is a strong but light and soft cloth having shimmering appearance okay class we have done our chapter now it's time to take your leave thank you